So you'll learn quite quickly doing a quick search on YouTube about productivity, efficiency, studying, medical school, doctors, tons of videos about how to study for 10 hours a day, stay focused, eight hours a day, stay focused, multiple hours a day, 24 hours a day, and just how to remain focused, how to beat procrastination and stuff like that. But there's not much videos and much resources out there that talk about how to achieve the results that you need to achieve without having to study that much. Nowadays, all of us are limited on time. So let's talk about me real quick. I already completed a training residency for three years. I did three years of internal medicine. I then took the board exam. And in my second year of internal medicine, I decided that I was gonna go into radiology. And despite that, I still wanted to finish up my training as well as become board certified. So my goal, first thing you gotta do is you gotta set a goal. My goal was I wanna become a board certified internal medicine physician. Then there was different options. A lot of my colleagues were taking review courses and everything like that. These review courses were expensive. And I knew that I was gonna eventually be heading to radiology. And the hospital that I was working at was not going to reimburse me for these courses. So I decided I'm gonna come up with my own study strategy and I'm gonna still pass the boards and become a board certified internal medicine physician. Now, another layer of complication was that I was also married. I had a baby. I had a family. I also lived about 35 minutes from the hospital, so I commuted as well. So time was very limited. So when I started to do research and look into different strategies of studying, because just like you, I had a goal in mind. I wanted to achieve that goal and I wanted to know how other people did it and, you know, learn different strategies and up my study game. But really, it was all about facts and strategies on how to stay productive and how to study for long periods of time. My issue was that I didn't have time. That was the exact issue. I didn't have time. So I needed to develop my own strategies on how to achieve the same results as everyone else. All of my colleagues wanted to become board certified internal medicine physicians, and I wanted to achieve the same results, but I didn't have the time. So instead, I developed different techniques, which at the end of the day helped me. I became a board certified internal medicine physician without taking a review course, without spending excess money. I did it all without even reading books. I didn't study the traditional way and it was stressful to begin with, but in the end led me to success and things that I learned while I was studying for my internal medicine boards, I still use them now and reference them now to help me with radiology. So that's pretty much the point of this video. I wanted to talk to you guys about studying and exactly how I studied without opening a book. Well, sort of. Let's get into it. It's time for me to actually go to work. I'm on call today, so let's get to work and we will reconvene shortly. So when I said we'd talk again shortly, I wasn't expecting seven to eight hours later, but this is medicine, what can we do? So essentially now we took the first step. We decided that you know we have a goal, we established our goal. I wanna become a board certified internal medicine physician. I have limited time, limited resources, so now I have to make the best out of it and figure out the best and most effective way to study. So I didn't know how, but I knew that I had to make this goal a reality and I was gonna have to step out of my comfort zone and come up with a new strategy to see if maybe that would help. And that's exactly what I tried to do. But before we get into it though, let me see if I can come and show you a little bit about what I had to do. All right, welcome to one of our resident libraries. Tons of books here, mostly of course on radiology, but if we take a look here, 
one of the thickest, heaviest books that we have here is Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine, the 15th edition. Take a look at this bad boy. So this is the gold standard, essentially, for internal medicine. If you want to become a great internal medicine doctor, this is exactly the book that you need to know inside and out and just be extremely proficient with getting through this book as well as memorizing this book. So this is basically the gold standard. But let's open this guy up and see what we're in store for. Honestly, a lot of respect for everyone that contributed to this book. But look at this. Now, this is what you call a dense textbook. Minimal figures, minimal images, just some charts, but just dense. Extremely thorough and just honestly an excellent resource. I do not discourage anyone. If you're into, into reading Harrison's, you're definitely going to become a great physician. I mean, this is all the information that you need. But somehow this needs to be put into your mind. And I mean, take a look at this. It's fantastic stuff, but I think maybe internal medicine residency, three years is just too short. There's no way that you can get all this information in your head in a matter of three years while you're working 80 to 100 hours, still doing research, all the other clinical responsibilities that you have. Forget about the fact that if you have a personal life, you know, just throw that out the window. But this is basically what Harrison's is, and it is really, it really is the principles of internal medicine. So this is the key to success for a lot of people. All right, enough messing around. Let's get to the point. How exactly did I pass the internal medicine boards? What exactly did I do? All right, so what is this mind-blowing strategy that I've been going on and on about? So essentially what I did is I tried to boil down the entire learning and examination process. Essentially, there's two main skills that you need. One is to process information and get it into your head. And secondly, it is to now be able to regurgitate that information, retrieve that information upon demand. And the second part is really what I think is the crucial step. And once you understand that retrieving the information from your mind is really the crucial step and where you should be spending majority of your time in, that's when my entire study routine, my entire process began to change and I started seeing the results. So the way that I implemented that is instead of spending my time mostly reading books, highlighting, taking notes, which is all stuff that I used to do before, I learn off of multiple choice questions. And this is what I continue to do even now in my second residency program. The way that I do that is I first analyze each and every question that I take. I don't use multiple choice questions as a test for myself in order to gauge my performance. Instead, I use multiple choice questions as a way to actually teach myself. So I analyze the questions. I see what kind of things that examiners are interested to ask. You'll notice a lot of patterns and the patterns actually help you figure out what you need to know and what you don't need to know. Secondly, I look at the multiple choice answer choices. Not only the right ones, but the incorrect ones. Things that I'm not familiar with, I quickly try to reference material. And what material do I use? Textbooks and things like that. But it's very different. You might be thinking that if you're going to go back and reference text material, you're going to end up reading chapters anyway. So you're wasting time. You might as well go back to reading the book, trying to memorize the book, and then you can do practice questions later. But that strategy really doesn't work. And also, you, when you're on a time crunch, you have to do what's most efficient. So what I did is that when I didn't understand something, we are in the age of technology. We have things that the prior generations never had. We don't have to scroll through encyclopedias. Now, with the touch of a button, in our phones even, we're able to have a wealth of knowledge. So I actually look things up online quite a bit. I use reliable resources like up to date now in radiology. I use like the radiology encyclopedia, radiopedia. And basically what I do is I learn off of that. Sometimes I even just Google something and go on and click on to Google images. Sometimes when you look at Google images, there's charts, there's diagrams, and you can learn a lot of information and huge topics where you can boil down just the most important bits of that topic that actually fills in the gaps so that you understand the entire topic just off of images that you find on Google Images. And that's essentially how I learn now. I teach myself everything that I need to know from these topics from two, two main ways. One, I try to get the knowledge in, not from reading books. I do read books 
from time to time. I do reference textbooks, but I'm not reading chapters like the way that you would imagine. I get them from lectures. I get them from practical experience at the hospital. Once I have that there, the, the rest of the time, I'm practicing with multiple choice questions. Now, back when I was in university, I remember some of the top students, one of the colleagues that I had who ended up going to a top-notch medical school, ended up doing an MD, PhD program. What he used to do is he used to go to the library and find workbooks. He used to go in the back of the textbooks and, and you know, go all the way to the back. And in the back, usually per chapter, there was tons of questions. If you remember when we were back in middle school, high school, our our teachers used to actually assign us homework from these chapters and all these questions. This colleague of mine, he used to just sit there doing question after question after question. Eventually, you're able to really understand and boil down what, what points are important and what points are testable. And that's honestly your guide work to success. So now, currently, even now, while I'm in radiology, I spend a lot of my time listening to lectures, trying to process and remember information the best that I can. I don't really make notes unless it's really to the point bullets of things that I just know that I need to memorize. But everything else that I do, I try to expose myself to as many radiology cases as possible through different case review series, through multiple choice questions, and I just kind of treat it as experience. I don't get bummed, bummed out when I get things wrong because I just treat it as experience. Each scenario and each case that I'm able to see before my actual board exam, I just, I just treat it as a win. There's, there's, there's absolutely nothing that, that can go wrong from that. So essentially for me, that's, that's pretty much my study strategy and that's been my study strategy since I passed my internal medicine boards. So basically using that strategy, I did that for many, many months. I would come back from work, I'd be at work, just doing some practice questions, practice questions, analyzing the answer choices, learning off of the wrong answer choices, Googling things, Googling images. And before I knew it, I was able to pass the internal medicine boards, became board certified, was practicing for a year. Now I'm here in radiology, using a lot of the same strategies with my hope to also pass my radiology board exam, which is in about a little under a year now. So that was pretty much it. That was the big switch that I made that made my, that boosted my, that my productivity and boosted my efficiency when it came down, down to studying. And so essentially, I mean, it helped me out. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it's gonna be able to help many of you out. Just make this change. It's gonna be uncomfortable. You know, this is not the typical learning strategy that we're used to, but sometimes you have to step out of your comfort zone to really become successful. So if you like that, please check out the, some of my other content. And until next time, we'll talk again.